Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we got more questing done as usual. We unlocked the Angler's Outfit, and we went to Blue Dragons for a few hours and got 43 Prayer, which as you can see by the chat box, we literally just finished just a few minutes ago. It's really weird right now because it's nighttime. It's like 1 a.m. and normally I don't start videos at night. Normally it's like a brand new fresh day. So it's kind of weird for me starting a video at this time. But we are gonna start out this video how I normally start out the videos by doing some fishing. Uh, we just started barb fishing in the last video for the first time on the account, so that's fun getting the agility up and strength up along with fishing. And we're going to be trying to passively work on getting 60 agility. Uh, tomorrow morning though, whenever we both wake up, we're going to go do underground pass together. Unfortunately, Spook accidentally put the XP that you get from Shadow of the Storm on a different skill than range, and you need, I think it's 25 range for underground pass, so... Uh, I think she said she was going to set herself up at Ammonite Crabs or Sand Crabs or something tonight. So by tomorrow, we should be all good to go for Underground Pass. We haven't planted anything on the account yet, and I was looking in the bank. I'll show you in a second. We had a bunch of seeds that we got from the toads, so I think we're going to buy some plant pots here and then plant all of them. Oh, wait, we need some watering cans too. I think I got all the seeds in this tab here. And I know like these don't look like much, but considering that we're only level 20 farming, having oak and willow seeds are like really, wait, can we even plant willows? Is it like 30 for willows? Okay, well, we can't even plant willows yet, but very soon we should be able to, but we're gonna plant a bunch of the acorns tonight. We don't have humidify, of course, so we gotta do this the old fashioned way. But before we start planting seeds, here's a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped, the global brand for men's hygiene and grooming products. Manscaped focuses on the three main odor zones, your body, your butt, and your balls. And they recently just came out with the Lawnmower 4.0, which is really nice because it's waterproof. So I just been using it in the shower. And in fact, I just recently moved in with my girlfriend and we can see what she thinks about it. Cara, what do you think of Manscaped's Lawnmower 4.0? Does it do a good job? Come on, you saw that smile. You know she was excited about it. A few months ago, Manscaped sent me their Performance Package 4.0, and I kept the box because it was just that beautiful. Some of the things they included in here, besides, of course, the Lawnmower 4.0, was the Weed Whacker, which is for your nose, ball deodorant, ball toner, and they have a couple gifts that comes with as well. It has this travel bag and these very nice anti-chafing boxers. The things I really like about the Lawnmower 4.0, the main thing is the skin safe technology. I haven't nicked myself and started bleeding from it. It has a travel lock on it, so if you triple press it, it won't turn on unless you triple press it again, uh, like I'm gonna do right now. And then the other thing that I really like about it is this light here. This light is super useful. Manscaped has also just released their new Ultra Premium Body Wash. It's infused with aloe vera and sea salt to both clean and hydrate your skin with a subtle masculine smell. It's paraben-free and cruelty-free, meaning there's no dyes or harmful chemicals. So go to manscapes.com and use code MUDKIP20 at checkout for 20% off free international shipping, and those two gifts that I mentioned before, and your balls will thank you. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. One last thing I'm doing tonight is I'm buying tomatoes so we can make baskets of tomatoes to pay for the oak trees. I do already have a bunch of cooking apples from thieving the Hosidia stall, so I don't need to buy them. And then I'm also just buying some grapes and chocolate bars just for cooking and herb lore maybe. Um, the baskets of the apples are for willow trees, by the way. The method I like to do for filling up baskets is taking out eight baskets and then the rest of the inventory with the fruit filling up half and then taking out the rest and filling up the second half. All these banking methods that I did years ago are kind of starting to come back to me now. Good morning gamers, it looks like the first farm run or the first tree run on the account got us to 24 farming. I was kind of hoping for 25 because that's the requirement for Garden of Tranquility, but we will get that level soon enough. Well, there's an agility level. I just want to get one more agility level this morning before we do underground pass later today, uh, but Spook is still asleep at the moment, so I think we'll just go on a random questing spree right now. Also just noticed I wasn't wearing my angler's outfit. That's okay, I was only fishing for like an hour though. Oh wait, is this the super long cutscene? All right, I'm going to the bathroom. Hey, we just unlocked the me melody. I do not want to watch another very long cutscene. Let's just cut to the end of the quest. Yay, oh, oops, I just kind of <laughs> skipped through the, the finishing message thing, but you saw we just got a bunch of XP and a bunch of skills. You got smithing level, crafting level, nice. That was the giant dwarf, by the way. Oh yeah, I have Prey Melee now, so I can like Prey Flick monsters. Oh, the game's so easy with the overheads, dude. Okay, this should be the end of the quest right here. 
And there we go, we get some crafting XP, herbal XP, and we unlock the Shades of Morton Teleport. So we can just teleport straight here now because without that, um, with what I currently have unlocked, I have to take the Fairy Ring here, uh, fail the Stepping Stone like three times in a row, and then run through this whole maze. So every 20 minutes we can just teleport straight here, which is going to be useful for the rest of the Mortania quests. And now it looks like we also got an herb level out of it, level 36. I was getting some flashbacks to the UIM when I spent like 30 hours doing Shades of Morton. Good times, I can't wait to do it all over again. <laughs> no, don't open the door, it's gonna attack me. No, stop opening it. <laughs> and then we get this diary from the quest that we can take over to the Apothecary in Varak, and it's gonna give us a little bit of herb lore XP. 335, which I guess isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but at level 36, that is quite a lot of XP. We're doing In Search of the Myrk next, and for that quest, we need a bunch of steel items. I think we just have iron and coal in the bank that we can just superheat. So this way, we don't have to run around the whole map buying a bunch of items. Uh, plus, we need 225 steel nails, which are like always sold out of the sawmills. So I'm pretty much going to have to make the steel nails myself anyways. Beekeeper random, and we get... First piece of the outfit, nice. I can't get through the dialogue because all these shades are attacking me, that's so annoying. Okay, let's go and repair this bridge and that is a new form of transportation unlocked. On the group Iron Man. Ooh, I love me a good bit of foreshadowing. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to fight my teammate for this quest. There's the end of In Search of the Myrk. We get a little bit of XP and all these skills and we can now do In Aid of the Myrk, the next quest in the series. Never mind actually, we need a mithril bar for the quest, which neither of us have, and we don't have the smithing level to make them yet. It was time for another farm run and we did get 27 farming out of that. We got three farming levels. We can now plant apple trees. I just saw that in the chat box. And the last requirement that we needed for Garden of Tranquility was 25 farming, so let's go do that. Just like one step into the quest, we get the Activate Ring of Karos, um, which is like, it's pretty useful, but it's not like a super useful thing, but it, it's kind of like a quality of life. It saves you a lot of money doing certain activities, um, like with boat trips, magic carpets, charter ships, uh, Dragon Tooth Island. You need it for certain quests. It saves you money for like Blast Furnace and all these other things that you see here. And it unlocks certain dialogue messages in certain situations. It's just like a really quirky item, just like the wise old man. Now, let me tell you the story about the old man who didn't see that well. Oh, I remember this cutscene. This is so funny. The new guard, Billy, just starts having an existential crisis. The dialogue in this quest is so good. Like, your character is going around describing all these plans. Like, this is the last living white fruit tree in existence and then Rolly, King Rolls, just like oh that'd be a good table and chairs and then she smacks him for saying all this bad stuff about all the hard work that I the adventurer put into this garden and now she's yelling at him. It's like when you were a kid sleeping over at your friend's house and then your friend's mom just starts yelling at him. <laughs> okay there is the completion of the quest. We got 5,000 farming XP out of it and that puts us at 31 farming. I think we started at 27 right? I think we can also pick these white tree fruits Oh nice, that's a medium task. And when you eat them, it heals 5-10% to of your run and restores 3 health. Probably not too useful. I want to do the Bone Voyage quest, but for the quest we need to get to 100 kudos, uh, which we're only at 53 right now. But we can get 50 more kudos just by cleaning the finds here, which we're going to have to do anyways to find the clean necklace, which will allow us to make dig site pendants. So we'll get our 50 kudos, get our clean necklace, and we'll be good to go. Yo, there it is. We got the clean necklace, which is 1 out of 51. We showed him the necklace, and we can now make dig site pendants. And we'll put the last display up here, and we're now at over 100 kudos. So we are set for the Bone Voyage quest, but it's time to go do the Underground Pass. Been looking forward to this quest for a long time. And by long time, I mean since last night when we decided to do it today. I just remember on the UIM, I was so stressed about this quest. I thought it'd be like super difficult and really annoying for inventory space. And it was just no struggle whatsoever. What's your agility at? 47. I got 52. It'll be all right. I, I swear I saw someone on Reddit or someone on YouTube do it at one agility. I think you can only do it one person at a time. First. On my UIM, it went like this. Let's see if it's the same thing. Is it at, wait, oh no, okay. I guess I could just mark these tiles as well, just so I know for the future. Using rapid heal here is genius. How does the spider go all the way around there, what? Hey, you leave her alone. Oh, ow, wait, no, <laughs> wait, stop. I guess he didn't see that well. We use the stick on the boulder. Don't watch, <laughs> cover your eyes. This is very graphic. 
probably gonna get demonetized for no. this. Can't believe they have this bloody scene in a children's game. Oh, here, let me be your safe spot. Oh, wait, I thought that was- wait, it's not you. <laughs> okay, I will be your safe spot. Oh, wait, I just realized I don't have any chaos or mind runes or anything. I just- wow, okay. I guess I'll just be like... Yo, can I borrow that bow and arrows, please? <laughs> oh, see, that kind of worked out. I have the regular short bow I just brought with me for the quest. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna telegrab these arrows over here. I, I have no idea how this worked, but it did. <clears throat> Well done. Just like my steak. Clink's gauntlets, best in slot, glove slot from like 2003. Yo, sit down. I am. That's so weird. Like for me, there's nothing there. You're just attacking an empty area. Oh, I can't go in because you're in there. Oh. Is it... Okay. Wait, that was easy. <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't see the well. We're free! Cool, let's finish the quest. There it is, the end of Underground Pass, Agility XP, Attack XP, and Ivan Staff. It has decent stats for a melee weapon too, which we can't even equip right now, but it's kind of like beds. It's low-key slept on. Hello? Is my mic muted? Wow, look at this painting. This is this is beautiful for just random scenery in the game. Dude, they actually went all out with these intricate details, all these paintings. Now, let's go do Bone Voyage. Yay, we drove the ship correctly, and that is the end of Bone Voyage. We now have access to Fossil Island, so... I did bring all the things with me so we can build the bank chest, so there we go. We're gonna make some clockworks now. We have to make some upgrades to the POH first, and we're also gonna need some steel bars, which I'll just superheat, because we have plenty of ores. Yeah, this should be everything. I have not trained construction at all, though. All the XP that we've gained has been from doing questing and from doing 99 fire making. And this is the house. We have a parlor and a garden, both of which are empty. Uh, we need to build the workshop, which is going to set us back 10,000 GP. We'll build that. Oh, I need a saw. I guess this is like a soup guide. Crafting table one, and then we need the crafting table two to be able to make the clockwork. So we'll upgrade that. And now we should be able to craft clockwork mechanism. And uh, we're going to make eight of these. Four for me, of course, and then four for Spook. Now we may as well upgrade it one more time just because we can. I brought the molten glass with me. We have the level for it, so yeah. We'll toss four of these into the group storage, and then we need to make dig site pendants so we could actually do the birdhouse runs. How many rubies do we have? Okay, so we'll cut those, and then we have a bunch of gold ore that we could smith into bars, and then we'll make those into necklaces. Wait, before we make too many of these, I want to do the family crest quest, and then from that quest, we're going to get the goldsmith gauntlet, so that way we can get a little bit more XP, which I know doesn't really matter for like making a hundred gold bars or something, but I want to do the quest, um, but there's only one thing that we're missing still, and that is the 40 crafting requirement. So I think we'll just go ahead and we will get level 40 crafting, so now we can do Family Crest. And then we do technically need 59 magic, but we'll just boost with the Wizard's Mind Bomb to cast the Fire Blast spell. Yeah. Man, this is such different vibes than playing the UIM, like playing on essentially like a regular Iron Man like this. I don't have to worry about going into the wildy. I can just like walk in here. It's not like a big deal. I don't have to like make a death pile or anything like that. And mind bomb up for the fire blast and nice. I figure we should probably pick up these red spider eggs while we're here and because it's a diary task. I'd always see these bots here when I go to get the looting bag on the EYM. I'd always come to these spiders and there'd always be a bot running around picking up these red spiders eggs. And the family crest quest is completed. One quest point. And we get the steel gauntlet, which we can pay 25k to get them made into the goldsmith gauntlets. Except I guess maybe this first time it was free. But changing them in the future is 25k. Unless we do the family pest mini quest, but we have to pay 500k GP for that, which I don't want to spend right now. And now that we have the goldsmith gauntlets, we can smelt a couple inventories of gold ore in peace. And now we get 56.2 XP, I think it is. Wait, that's more than double the XP, isn't it? Because normally uh, gold bars apparently give 22.5, but this is 56.2. So that's pretty much 2.5 times the XP. There's 42 crafting. That is a milestone because with 42, we can make fish bowls, which is the item that we still needed for one of the RFT subquests the underwater one. So I was just putting that off until we could craft the thing for it. So now we could do that after we uh, make a bunch of jewelry here. We'll do that. Now the thing about ruby necklaces is that when you make them into dig site pendants, they become untradeable. 
uh, which I assume is because of the fact you actually need to unlock the ability to enchant them, which is what we did earlier by finding the clean or whatever. And you can't put untradeable items into the group storage, so I probably shouldn't enchant all of these. I don't know when Spook plans to unlock Fossil Island, but I'll just leave some of these unenchanted for now. And if I need more, I could always enchant them as I go. Oh wow, I didn't even realize that you need 50 crafting just to make an amulet of strength. Um, okay, well, we're at least going to make a couple amulets of magic here. I'm glad we can make at least some kind of upgrade. And then amulets of power are 70 crafting, and then uh, it's level 80 crafting just to get glories. There are other ways to get um, diamond amulets though, like we do the ham storerooms, but I'd rather just train crafting than do that to be honest. Right now when we use the dig site pendant, we only have one teleport, which I just used and it took us right here, and also was a rock task. But we need to unlock another teleport that will allow us to do birdhouse runs. And then we also need to just touch the magic mush trees here to unlock them, so we'll unlock this one. You can see it pops up here now. Okay, we've ran over here for another magic mush tree, so we have these two unlocked. And then to unlock this teleport on the dig site pendant, we just use it on the strange machine. And then now, if we try to rub it, we'll have these two options. So the fossil island teleport will take us right here. And then uh, there's one more mushroom tree that we have to unlock for birdhouse runs. Here we go, the last tree, and then there's this one for the Solius steps, but that one's not really too important. We need to buy a bunch of hop seeds, but I have a feeling they're probably going to be very much sold out on every world. So we should probably just Thieve Master Farmers to get them instead. They did a nerf kind of recently though, where that when you Thieve Master Farmers, um, the loot kind of scales based on your farming level, but it mainly just affects the high level seeds like the Ranners, Torstals, and Snapdragons based on if your farming level is at least 71, which obviously for us it's not. So we're not going to get a lot of those higher tier seeds, but if we're not going to be here for too long, it probably doesn't really matter because we're just trying to get a bunch of hop seeds. And luckily, our thieving is 76, so we also shouldn't be failing too much. Honestly, I can't stand doing this already. I just want to get back to questing. Um, but this is definitely at least faster than hopping worlds, buying them from Olivia, buying like two seeds at a time probably. Um, if it was full stock, it'd be really good. But right now, with the release of Group Iron Man, there is no way we're going to find fully stocked worlds for hop seeds. Yeah, let's just go back to questing for now. We can at least, like, set up our first few birdhouse runs. Oh, this is great. Our very first birdhouse run. Although it's not exactly quite the same because we're not checking them. We're just setting them up for the first time. But yeah, dude, this feels good. I haven't done a birdhouse run in so long. I don't plan to train Hunter outside of doing birdhouse runs. So it's going to be interesting to see just how high we can get the Hunter solely from doing birdhouse runs and it's especially nice skipping past these early levels of hunter using birdhouses because low level hunter is so slow because you have to like catch birds and we'll make an extra fishbowl for spook so that way she can do the sub quest without having the crafting level oh my gosh i have to kill my brethren no oh that's a collection log item the fresh crab claw nice we cooked the fish cake first try no burn and then we're not gonna eat it we're gonna use it on pirate pete and that is the Pirate Pete subquest complete. We got a thousand XP and a few skills, and I think it's up to Addy Gloves now. We got a smithing level. I haven't done Fremnic Trials because we didn't have the crafting level, but today we trained up crafting and now we can do Fremnic Trials. I mean, you technically can do it without the crafting level, um, but there's like a 1 in 17 chance to get the item you need, so I'd rather not do that. Oh yeah, and also from the subquest, we got the Fishbowl Helm and the Diving Apparatus, which we're gonna eventually use for seaweed runs, or at least for collecting seaweed sports. I think you don't actually need them to do a seaweed run. But if you want to stay underwater for a while, like to collect the seaweed spores, then you're going to want those. And then if we use the chisel on the crab claw, we get, uh oh, <laughs> we failed. Oh well. It, it was on purpose because I want to save bank space. Okay, we have to, we have to perform in front of everyone here. Let's, let's play the liar. Just imagine everyone's in their underwear. Oh no, they're hot. That's what I say when I take jalapenos out the oven. RIP hardcore status. End of the Fremnic Trials, we get 2.8k XP and a bunch of skills. And do we get any levels? Got strength level, crafting level, fletching level, woodcutting level. But most importantly, we now have a new pet, or possibly even a bunch of new pets. After Fremnic Trials, I guess it only makes sense to go do Fremnic Isles next. And then here we get the Jester's Outfit, which does actually have some stats, but I don't know like where I'd use that. When I dance, you give free stuff plocks. We kind of need to make Yakhide armor for this quest, and we need 46 crafting, and we only have 44, but I'm pretty sure in the bank, if we go through like and cut these gems, and we have Molten Glass as well that we can blow, uh, I think we should be able to get 46. And there we go, 46 crafting. I ended up making a bunch of rings of dueling and a bunch of games necklaces too, so 
put some of these into the group storage. Oh, dude, I can't believe this is my armor going into this final fight here. I'm wearing the Clink's gauntlets. <laughs> this setup right here, this is what RuneScape's all about. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Yeah, even with like a full inventory of food, we can't even get him to half health, so we're gonna have to teleport out. I don't think we could do this with our current gear and stats, so we'll have to hold off this final boss fight for another time, but I'm glad we got the majority of the quest out of the way at least. It is that time of the night though where we are gonna start AFK fishing. Uh, we started off the video with 138 quest points, and now we're up to 158. And then the total level, we're up to 1068 total. Currently just going to buy some more feathers for barb fishing though, because we've been running kind of low. I'm still having so much fun just running around, questing, making all these different upgrades, improving the quality of life of the account. It's been so much fun and I hope you're enjoying watching as well. Uh, if you haven't checked out Spook Dog's videos, make sure you check them out. It will be linked in every video description. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow.